In this video, we'll talk about wine enclosures, from corks to glass to screw caps, and why the best wine enclosure may not be what you think it is. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the V is for Vino Nerd Lab. We take complicated wine topics and make them simple. Today's topic is wine enclosures. Wine enclosures. Natural corks, synthetic cords, screw tops, glass, paper towels, your finger. There are a lot of ways to close a wine bottle. Which way is right is a hard answer, but I can definitely tell you which ways are wrong. You see, before these enclosures, wine bottles were typically sealed using oiled rags or wooden plugs, which left the wine, well, tasting like an oily rag or a wooden plug. Plus, the wine simply couldn't age. And the reason was oxygen. The rags and the wood allowed too much air into the bottle. Oxygen is kind of a strange thing. It's the enemy of wine until it isn't. In the cellar, you want to control it. Some oxygen is okay as part of your winemaking style, though many winemakers allow no oxygen at all. In the bottle, you want a little, but not too much. If there's no oxygen, your wine will be what's called reductive, and over the long term have flavors of rotten eggs and burnt rubber. But too much, and the wine turns to vinegar. Proper enclosures help regulate this oxygen transmission. We can categorize enclosures into four main types. First, we have classic corks, which have a 250 year history of enclosing wine bottles. This is the only true cork, as cork is a natural product that comes from cork trees, mostly from Spain and Portugal. And the cool thing is that it's a completely renewable resource. They strip the trees once every nine years, and then the cork grows again. Corks are recyclable, they seal well for fairly long periods of time, and they give you that classic quintessential pop when you open them. Ah, music to my ears. And most importantly, corks allow the transfer of tiny amounts of oxygen into the wine, about a milligram per year. So what's the problem with corks? Well, there's a few. First off, they're relatively expensive compared to other options. Second, every cork is like a unique snowflake. Because they're a naturally occurring material, different corks allow different amounts of oxygen in. This means that from bottle to bottle, the wine may develop at different rates. And the biggest problem, in my opinion, is something called TCA, or this thing, which I'm not going to try and pronounce. All you need to know is that it affects about 3% of wine corks. That doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that equates to about one bottle in every three cases of wine. So chances are you've likely opened up a tainted bottle or two. And when a wine has cork taint, there's no saving it. In its mildest forms, it makes the wine flavors taste muted and the wine will just taste flat. Oh. If it's intense, the wine will smell like wet cardboard or musty basement. And the Ew. older the wine gets, the worse the effects become. There's nothing worse than saving a bottle for 20 years and finding out it's ruined from cork taint. Still, 70% of all wines use cork, and it's the most proven option for wines that need to age long term. But out of curiosity, what are our enclosure alternatives? The synthetic cork is just what it sounds like, fake cork. Usually some combination of foam and plastic, but sometimes plant-based, meant to emulate the real deal. With this option, cork taint is no longer an issue, and they're still recyclable, much cheaper, and over the last few years, they've gotten better at regulating oxygen. But nobody likes them. I'm sorry, synthetic corks. They feel cheap, they look cheap, they're associated with cheap wines, so most serious winemakers won't use them, especially for long-term aging. Screw top enclosures. The most popular brand being Stelvin have some hardcore advocates in the wine world and are totally underrated. First off, no cork taint. Second, they're incredibly consistent. Screw tops are machine made and that little plastic part inside the cap can regulate oxygen to a winemaker's exact specification. The problem, a few. They're only somewhat recyclable, they aren't natural, and people still associate them with cheap wines. And while they should regulate oxygen in theory, they've only been around for 30-ish years, so they aren't quite proven yet for super long-term storage. These glass stoppers are show stoppers. They look good. No TCA with this option and they protect the wine. 
but they're a very specific choice as they dramatically change the overall look and feel of a bottle. Plus, they're expensive and they add weight to the wine, not ideal when it comes to shipping. They also don't allow much oxygen in, so they're really only used for wines that are consumed young. And that's not it. There are even more wine enclosures. Crown caps, helix, zorks, twiggles, and blurbs. But we're out of time. Me, I'd say for the 90% of wines on the planet that are meant to be consumed in five years or less, screw caps are great. And for long-term aging, I'll take my chances with cork. That is, if I ever get the chance. I hope you enjoyed this Nerd Lab on wine enclosures. As always, keep geeking out.